Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we're making this little Frankie keychain. He's quick to work up and it's a perfect little Halloween gift for someone. I just realized that this poor Frankenstein is missing his bolts, so feel free to chain a few stitches of gray yarn and add those, or leave him as is because he's still super cute. If you're selling keychains or you just want to add something extra to your gifts, this printable by The Naughty Boss is a great little addition and I'll link it down below in the description box. We'll head over to supplies and then we'll get started. For supplies, I used a worsted weight yarn by Knit Picks or We Crochet. I used a green and a black and a comfy and a shine worsted and these are both my favorite types of worsted weight yarn. I have a C. 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. I grab a stitch marker to two nine millimeter safety eyes. You can use bigger or smaller, as that's totally fine as well. You'll wanna grab a yarn needle, some scissors, and then I like to use embroidery floss and a needle to attach my keychain, but you can also attach it at the end and you don't need to use that if you don't want to. And then here's the keychain itself. It comes in two pieces that you want to attach and you need some sort of tool to close the piece. I just use this really old tool that I have for my floral wire. And I will link these keychains down below. I got these from Amazon. I also like to use some pins, that's optional. And then I have some stuffing here. And then I'll also link these printable keychains that I got from Etsy down below. Okay guys, we're gonna get started. Since the black is really hard to see, I am gonna start out with some gray yarn. So I have my yarn, my hook, and my stitch marker. I'm gonna start out by making four single crochet into a magic circle. So you can do that however you'd like, or we can start by making a slip knot. Here, I'm gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers, I'm gonna hold that tail with my ring finger. I'm gonna push the back piece to the front and pull up on that loop. My tail here will adjust my loop and then I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna chain two, so I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through again for a chain two. I'm gonna single crochet into that second chain from the hook, and I do have videos if you need me to go slower, and I will put those in the description box below. Insert your hook underneath that top loop in the second chain from the hook, and we're gonna make one single crochet. We're gonna go back through that same stitch, working into the second chain, and we're gonna make our second single crochet. So we're gonna make four total. Going back through the same loop, we're gonna make three, and then back to that same loop, we're gonna make four single crochet. So this is making a magic circle without making a magic circle. <laughs> and I will link that video down below. I'm gonna tighten up my middle and then I'm just gonna count here to show you our four stitches. So I have one, two, three, and four. And if you do this way, you'll see this little bit of yarn here. And this is just the start of our slip knot. So we can just skip right over that. We're gonna go into our first stitch. Round one ends with four stitches. I'm gonna place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. Feel free to put it on the first stitch of the round if that's what you're comfortable with. For round two, we're gonna make a single crochet in the first stitch, three single crochet into the next. So we're gonna go under both loops of our first stitch and we're gonna complete one single crochet. I also have a separate video on a single crochet where I go nice and slow, so I'll link that as well. Move over to the next stitch and place three single crochet into that stitch. So here is single crochet one, go back to the same stitch, here is single crochet two, and three. Move over to your next stitch and place one single crochet and then move over to your last stitch and we're gonna place three single crochet into that stitch. So I always work my last stitch into the stitch with my stitch marker, but again, feel free to do what you're comfortable with. So at the end of round two, we will have eight stitches. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. I'm gonna tighten up my circle one more time. For round three, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna just do it four times. 
So in that first stitch, I'm gonna make a single crochet, and then in that second stitch, I'm gonna make three single crochet and continue that pattern. Here in the first stitch, I'm gonna make one single crochet. I'm really struggling with this slippery hook right now, so just bear with me. In the next stitch over, you can make three single crochet into that same stitch. Here's two and three. Moving over a stitch, make one single crochet, and then move over and make three single crochet into that next stitch. One, two, and three. Move over a stitch and make a single crochet. Move over and make three single crochet into the next stitch. Move over and make one single crochet. And then we'll be making three single crochet into our last stitch. At the end of round three, we're gonna have 16 stitches. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. Tighten up my middle one more time. And then for round four, we're gonna single crochet in the next two stitches. And then I'm gonna make three single crochet into that corner stitch. So here I have single crochet into that first stitch. Move over and make another single crochet. Then I'm gonna make three single crochet into my next stitch. From here I'm gonna make three single crochet, so I have one, two, three, and then I'm gonna put three into that corner stitch. Single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, move over, single crochet three. We're gonna make three single crochet into this corner stitch. We're trying to make a square, so we're trying to make some corners. I'm gonna put a single crochet in the next three stitches and then three into my corner stitch. Here's single crochet one, single crochet two, and single crochet three, and then I'm gonna put three into this stitch here. I have one, same stitch, two, and three. I'm gonna make a single crochet into the next three stitches, and then I'll place three into that corner stitch. So here is single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, move over, single crochet three, and then I'm gonna place three into this stitch here. And then I'm gonna end with one single crochet. You'll end round four with 24 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. And I just wanna show you here really quick, just in case you're just learning, how you can count your rounds. Here is round one, round two, round three, round four, and then we'll be starting for round five. For round five, we're gonna make a single crochet into the next three stitches, and then we're gonna make three into our corner stitch. So here is single crochet one, two and three and then we're going to make three single crochet into that corner stitch then we're going to make a single crochet in the next five stitches so here is single crochet one move over two three four and five, and then we're gonna make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Make a single crochet in the next five stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. Make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Make a single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna make three single crochet into our corner stitch. And then we'll end with two single crochet. 
At the end of round five, we will have 32 stitches. And here you can see we're really getting that boxy look. For round six, we're gonna single crochet in the next four stitches. And then we'll place three single crochet into our corner stitch. So here's one, two, three, and four. And then we'll make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Now we're gonna single crochet into the next seven stitches. And then we'll place three single crochet into our corner stitch. Single crochet one, move over two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we'll make three into that corner stitch. Make single crochet in your next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we'll put three into our corner single crochet in the next seven once again. Here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We'll put three into our corner stitch. And then we're gonna end with three single crochet. And here is our third and our last. So at the end of round six, we're gonna have 40 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. I do suggest counting, making sure that you're on the right track. And then we'll move on to round seven. So round seven is a little bit different. We're gonna single crochet, but we're gonna go into the back loop only. So this is the back loop, the one that's away from you. You're gonna place your hook underneath the back loop and make a single crochet. So all we're gonna do is single crochet in the back loop all the way around for the next 40 stitches. We will be making a color change at the end of this round and I will show you how we will do that. So we'll continue to go all the way around the back loop only. Thank you guys for joining me today. I love this little keychain. My daughter had it on her backpack I think it was the year before last year and that's the funny thing I've had this pattern out for like three years maybe and I never realized until today that I did not have bolts on his head so I'm a little disappointed in myself <laughs> I had an old Frankenstein pattern that I did many many years ago and he had bolts so I can't believe I didn't even put it together but anyway no big deal but i do hope you like this pattern i wish i had more halloween patterns i'm super into halloween i love it i just keep getting more and more decorations and uh, my daughter is really really into halloween she's the one who did the spooky laugh in the beginning she was she was really wanting to do that for you guys so i think it's so hilarious um but she's really for being so little, she loves to be scared, so I just think it's kind of fun because I love to be scared, so she must take after me, but I do love to freak myself out on Halloween. So you'll have to let me know if you're the same way or if you were like, no way, I'm not into that. Okay, continue making single crochet into the back loop only, and then we'll be making a color change. I want to make a quick comment about my color change. For some reason, I did this differently than I usually do. I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but I will show you here. So normally I would go into my last stitch and I would yarn over with that gray yarn, but for some reason I didn't. So I'll show you what I did do here. I grabbed my other piece of yarn, I placed it underneath my gray yarn and I made a knot, which I usually do. You can pull that yarn all the way down and then get set up with your new color and for me that's green. We are going to yarn over with our green, pull it through, 
and then we'll yarn over once again and pull through to finish our single crochet. So we still have our last stitches gray and our new stitch will be green, but the normal way that I do it just looks a tad bit cleaner and I will link that video down below. So I apologize for doing it this way. I don't know what I was doing, but it still works out. So go ahead and change your stitch marker. We're still gonna have 40 stitches. Here you'll see that we've created this little ridge for round seven, and now we're gonna be moving on to round eight. For round eight, we're gonna single crochet in the next 40 stitches. We're gonna go underneath both loops, and we're actually gonna continue this for a few rounds. So for round eight through 14, you can single crochet all the way around for the next 40 stitches, and then we will meet back at the end of round 14. Before you go crocheting on, I wanna show you how you can count your rounds. So here we know that our color change is round eight. Here's the beginning of it and here's the end of round eight. Then we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So it's easy to just start with that first color change and count from here, eight, nine, 10, just so you know as you start continue crocheting. I'm reaching the last few stitches of round 14. At the end of round 14, we're still gonna have 40 stitches. So you may wanna count your stitches just to make sure. I'm gonna change my stitch marker then I'm gonna grab another stitch marker because I wanna close up this working yarn because we're gonna place our eyes and add our scar and our little hair pieces. You can grab your nine millimeter safety eyes. We are gonna place them between round 12 and round 13. So I like to use a pin just to kind of keep my spot and that's totally optional. But from here, I'm gonna count round eight I know is my color change eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. I'm gonna place my pin between round 12 and 13, and then I'm gonna look and see if it's pretty centered from my magic circle, and it is. So I wanna leave four stitches open in between my eyes. So I'm just gonna count and make sure that there's four empty stitches, and then I'm gonna place my pins to see if eye placement will look good. If you need to move it over, it's really easy to just adjust your pins before you actually add your eyes. So I'm happy with where I'm at here. I'm gonna add my nine millimeter eye. If you're a tight crocheter like I am, sometimes it's a little bit tougher to get it in there. And then I'm gonna place my other eye and see if I like the placement before I add the backings. So there are my eyes. I think they look pretty good, so I'm gonna grab my plastic backings. And for these, I just add them on and then I do like the seesaw motion to close them and I do about two clicks. I try not to go right up to the yarn. I like to leave just a little bit of space, but sometimes they just click into place on their own. So don't worry if that happens. You can try to go slow with the seesaw motion, but sometimes it just has a mind of its own. From here, we're gonna add a little bit of hair and like a little scar mark, and that's only if you want to. And we're gonna add that above the eye. Go ahead and grab a long piece of your black or your gray, whatever yarn that you're using, and add that, weave that into your yarn needle. I have a really long piece here, and then I made like a triple knot on the end, just so I have this to get started. Okay, I'm gonna start on the inside of my head because I wanna attach my yarn, but I kinda wanna get an idea of where I'll be putting my scar. So I'm gonna go right above here, above the eye. I'm gonna grab a piece of yarn on the inside and then pull it all the way through to my knot. Then I'm gonna go through another piece of yarn. It could be the same one, a different one, it doesn't matter. Because we wanna make a knot on the inside of the head. So pull that yarn all the way through until you have a loop at the end. Then you'll place your needle behind the loop and pull it all the way through. This will make your knot to secure it on the inside. So this is totally up to you. Add your scar wherever you want to. You can place it higher, lower, on the other side, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go up through here and kind of see where I like to place it. Then I'm gonna go through a bottom piece and kind of go just across the scar and then probably add one more little bit on the other side. Now 
Now using that same piece, I'm gonna go up and just add a few different hair pieces. I'm gonna go in between the rounds where the color changes and just make different sizes and see kind of what looks good and just add as many as you want. Okay, I think that looks good. That's all I'm gonna add. So now I'm gonna secure it again, go back on the inside of the head, go under a piece of that yarn and pull it all the way through until you have a loop. And then just make sure that you put your yarn needle behind the loop and that knot will secure it in place. You can just cut off your yarn and leave that. And now we are going to attach the keychain. You can either do this now or you can wait till the end. It doesn't really matter. I used to attach the key ring right to the magic circle and I noticed it was really pulling so I decided to change it up and use embroidery floss and this worked a lot better. So I took a long piece of floss and I knotted up the end. What I'm going to do is go right next to my magic circle and I'm going to secure this yarn in place. Just like we did with the other thing, you're going to pull it all the way down to the knot. You're going to pick up another piece on the inside of the head. Pull it all the way through until you have a loop and then you'll go behind that loop to secure it in place. With the embroidery floss, I will do this about two or three times just to make sure that that floss is really attached securely because the keychain does take a lot, of, a lot of the weight. Once you feel secure, go ahead and go up through your magic circle. It gets a little bit tough right here. Try not to go right down the middle, try to go right next to the middle so that you can add this little key ring at the end and then move over a bit. You don't want to go right back through that same stitch. You want to kind of move over to the other side of that magic circle and then pull this through. So once you have that connected, I do go up and down about 10 to 12 times. I really try to get a good amount of embroidery floss on that key ring. Okay, so this isn't even going 10 or 12 times, it's maybe seven or eight, and you can see how much more secure the key ring is, and it's not pulling on our first round. So I'm just gonna call it from here for video's sake, and I'm gonna make a knot on the inside. Grab a piece of yarn on the inside of the head, once again, pull it all the way through until you have a loop at the end, go behind the loop, pull it through. And I would do this a few times to make sure that your embroidery floss was secured inside of the head. For round 15, you're just gonna take out that extra stitch marker and we're gonna do something a little different. We are gonna start with a decrease and I like to do an invisible decrease and I do have a video on that that I will link down in the description box below. For round 15, we're going to make one decrease and then we're going to single crochet into each of the next six stitches. We'll be repeating that five times around. So here for a decrease, I'm going to take my hook, go underneath the front loop of the first stitch, the front loop of the second. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. And then I'm going to put a single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Here's my second decrease. And again, watch that video if you need to. Here is single crochet in the next six. Here's two, three, four, five and six here is our third decrease single crochet in the next six here is one two three four five and six here is our fourth decrease. Here 
single crochet in the next six. Here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then here's our fifth and our last decrease. And then we'll end with six single crochet. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. At the end of this round, we'll have 35 stitches. For round 16, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next five stitches. We'll be doing that five times around. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet in the next five. Here is one, two, three, four, into five and then here is our second decrease single crochet in the next five here is our third decrease single crochet in the next five stitches. Here is our fourth decrease. Single crochet in the next five stitches. Here's our fifth and final decrease. Single crochet in the next five stitches. At the end of round 16, we'll have 30 stitches. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round 17, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next four, and we'll be doing that five times. Here is our first decrease, and then single crochet into the next four. Here is our second decrease, single crochet in the next four. Our third decrease, single crochet in the next four. Our fourth decrease, single crochet in the next four. And then our fifth and final decrease, single crochet in the next four. At this point, you will have 25 stitches. We're gonna stop here for a second. We're gonna grab that extra stitch marker and just secure our working yarn because we're gonna start to stuff the head. Grab your stuffing, I just like to grab a handful and then start to stuff the head. I personally like to make a hole in the middle, kind of like burrow in a little hole and then eventually I'll be adding more stuffing to that hole. For me, it helps to keep the lumps out, um, but do what works for you. You wanna keep the head flat so when you are stuffing, try not to round out the top of the head too much. So I add to the middle and then I only add a little bit to start as I'll continue adding as we continue to crochet. I don't want to stretch out my piece because then it makes it a little bit harder to keep crocheting all the way around. We're going to move on to round 18 
take out that extra stitch marker and then if you didn't change your stitch marker before do that now for round 18 we are going to make one decrease single crochet in the next three stitches we'll be doing that five times around so i'll start counting with you but then i'm going to let you continue to count on your own here we have one decrease and then we'll single crochet in the next three stitches and then continue to make a decrease and then single crochet in the next three all the way to the end. reaching our last decrease and then ending with our last three single crochet. You can change your stitch marker at the end of this round. You'll have 20 stitches. Usually at this point I like to stuff each round, but I'm going to hold off and we will do one more round and then we'll stuff. For round 19, we're going to make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. So here is our first decrease, single crochet in the next two, and then continue to count on your own a decrease, single crochet in the next two. Reaching our last decrease and our last single crochet in the next two. We've got a little stuck here. And then at the end of round 19, you can change your stitch marker. We'll have 15 stitches at this point. I'm going to grab a little bit more stuffing, so secure that working yarn. And then I'm going to add a little bit more to this hole that I made in the middle of my head. This will be the last round to stuff, so make sure that you're happy with the stuffing that you add. Stuffing can be tricky. Sometimes I overstuff, sometimes I don't put enough stuffing. If I make two different stuffed animals, I guarantee they'll look different. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just do what feels right at that moment and don't stress because each one is handmade and they'll just be unique. Once you're happy with your stuffing, take out that extra stitch marker. We're gonna start round 20 and round 20 is one decrease, one single crochet. And we'll be doing that five times around. Here is our first decrease. And then we'll single crochet into the next stitch and then continue that pattern with a decrease and a single crochet all the way around. It's a little bit trickier to hold your piece once it's stuffed, but just take your time and go slow. Okay, we're reaching the last stitches here. 
I'm going to go into my last stitch. You'll have 10 stitches at this point. You can change your stitch marker. For round 21, we are going to decrease in each stitch around. So all we're going to be doing is making five decreases. Here is our first decrease. Our second. Our third. Our fourth. And our fifth. At the end of round 21, that's our last round, you can take out your stitch marker and then we're going to leave a long piece of yarn so that we can fasten off and close up this piece. You'll end with five stitches. So once you cut your piece, you can yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through. Give that a little bit of a tug and then grab your yarn needle and weave that yarn through your needle. We're going to count our stitches. I like to count backwards so that I can find my first stitch. So here's our fastened off bit. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So my fifth stitch looks tiny bit hidden. And that's why I like to count backwards. What we're going to do is place our needle behind the front loop of every stitch. So here's our first stitch. I'm going to go behind the front loop and then I'm going to pull that needle straight down towards me. If you close your pieces a different way, feel free to do that. I'm going to move to my second stitch and pull that through the front loop. And I like to turn my piece as I go so that each stitch is in front of me. Here is our third stitch, our fourth, and then our fifth and our last stitch. From here, you're going to close up that hole, but then you're going to keep an eye on that hole because we need to reinsert our needle. So you can close it tight, keeping an eye on where you had that hole. And here is, I can see mine. And then you can weave that all the way through. Once you weave it through, just give it a good tug so that that bottom piece closes up. And then you can kind of smoosh it back so it's flat. That way the bottom of the head has a, um, a nicer finish. That's it, you guys, your Frankie's done. If you did want to add something else, feel free. If you didn't add the keychain, you can do that now. He ends up being a pretty quick project. Weave in all of your yarn ends and then give that a snip. And he's ready to go for a ride on that backpack. He's, um, he's a fun little guy, <laughs> so I hope you enjoy him. If you wanted to, if you are gifting this or selling this at a market, you can add these cute little principles and he is ready to go. Here he is in the black and you can totally see that he has more stuffing um, and it just gives him a little bit of a different look. Thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel for more crochet alongs and crochet tutorials. Head over to yarnsociety.com for free patterns.